Hello everyone, it's Helen at Journaling Planet. Do you hoard gorgeous pieces of wrapping paper like this? Or maybe you hoard beautiful washi tapes like this? Obviously, these things are designed to be used. So today, I'm going to show you something that might help you both hoard and use your stash at the same time. Yes, my friends, dreams do come true. Let's get started. So the good news about this project is that it's a really easy project and a satisfying project. And to start with, the first step is just to have some cardboard and something to cover the cardboard with if your cardboard isn't already pretty. Mine is just a piece of Amazon packaging. I plan to upcycle this using some of my reclaimed materials in my stash. If you have some beautiful craft card, you probably don't need to do this step. You can just cut up your craft card, but that's not the position I'm in. So I'm gonna cut my ugly card into strips. Do you think the card can hear me calling it ugly? I really hope not, I'm starting to get a bit of a complex. These are the perfect size for my journal. You can cut these to any size that fits your journal. Next thing I'm gonna do is take some book page and music paper and cover them up using my glue stick. Very straightforward second step. Okay, I've just zoomed you in a little bit so that you can see a little bit more closely how these things look now. Just like a piece of card covered in book page or music paper right now, but that is all about to change. This is a really great scrap busting project and all that remains really is for us to choose the pieces we'd like to put on these sample cards and then fashion these into tags as we normally would. Now I have some beautiful paper, wrapping paper that I've been given over the years that I've hoarded for crafting. And I know why it's still sitting in my stash. It's because it's too beautiful. And I know that once it's gone, it's gone. And then I won't be able to see it again. Uh, Cause you know, I'll do those projects, possibly give the projects away. Um, so I, I won't see that paper again, more than likely. So the way around this is to create a sample card where you tear off little pieces of the paper, ink around it, and then glue it down. And once I've created this sample card, I'm going to have a lasting record of the paper that I created in this case and loved in these two cases. So let me just glue this down and get the first one made so you can see what the tag looks like when it's finished. I am going to sew around these at the end uh, but we can get a sense of what they're going to look like just with the usual finishing touches like inking around and putting in a topper. So even though I've yet to put the finishing touches to this on my sewing machine, I think you can get a sense of the fact that this is a really beautiful piece of ephemera to put into my junk journal. I've got pieces of all the papers I love, which means I am now freed up to use the paper that I've been hoarding because I'm already hoarding it on this ephemera in a much smaller form. The same can obviously be done with fabric. Look, for example, at something like this. I've only got a tiny little bit of this fabric. This is the piece that I have from a thrift store. It was a scrap piece. And obviously this has sat in my stash for ages because I'm really scared <laughs> of using it and then sort of never seeing it again because I give the piece of ephemera away or I um, you know, give the project away. Same goes for this. I have this little strip, these cute little elephants, and also this lovely kind of leafy fabric. I've only got a tiny bit of it. I don't want to see the end of it. So I've been, again, hoarding these scraps, sitting in my stash, taking up space unnecessarily. 
So I'm going to apply a little bit of fabric glue. Again, I'm going to do some sewing at the end, but I'm going to do some fabric glue for now. Just a little dab here and there and finish this tag off. So again, I've yet to do the stitching on this, but hopefully you can see the real potential this has as a piece of ephemera. I have gone for very neutral backgrounds and very neutral topper because I want the fabrics to be the star of the show. But you don't have to do that. The point of this channel is not for you to see what I'm doing and then go out and buy the same things as me to create the same things as me. It's for you to look at your stash and think, how can I adapt what Helen's doing and use things that are already in my stash? So if you've got garish, bright craft paper, have a go and see what it looks like using that for a sample card backing. You never know. Sometimes these experiments really go to unexpectedly beautiful places. So it's always worth looking at your stash. You know, you could just take a newspaper or a magazine, just experiment and see how it goes. So before I go and do my sewing, I am conscious of the fact that some people uh, out there do not have sewing machines and you really don't need it for this project. You know, the as you can see, the, the fabric and the, and the tag, they look nice as they are. I'm just putting the sewing on for a kind of additional touch. However, it did get me thinking about what people who don't have a sewing machine but do want to put an additional touch on could do. And I wondered about using a stapler. <laughs> uh, I haven't tried this off screen, which would have been a sensible thing to do. So you're about to see the raw results of this experiment. So I'm just going to take one piece of fabric at a time and I'm probably going to try stapling it in two places. Let's see how it goes. Okay, I sincerely doubt it's coming across quite how cool that looks on camera. I really like the utilitarian edge. I don't mind that it goes through to the side. That to me just adds a little something extra to the piece of ephemera. So there you go. If you can use a stapler to add an extra piece of decoration or utilitarian um, aesthetic to your work, I'm going to finish up this tag. And there we have it. That is such a cool effect with the stapler. Lucky for me, it worked out given that I'm filming this. But just goes to show, you can just use office supplies and stationery and get a crafty effect sometimes. I'm going to go and sew these two pieces. And then I'm going to show you that you do not have to stop here. There are way more possibilities than you realize when it comes to looking at your stash, seeing things that you've hoarded and creating sample cards for your junk journal. I'll be right back. So here are the finished pieces. There's the paper. I really went to town with the free flow stitching there. <laughs> uh, what can I say? I can't really help myself once I start. Um, I just decided to go over in lots of different patterns. It's not necessary. It, in fact, it's totally unnecessary. I just felt like it. Uh, it would have been a perfectly nice tag, even without the, the, even without the stitching over it. And then there's the fabric one. I didn't go quite so much to town with this one, just a little bit of stitching here and there. And of course, we've got the stapled tag that looks just as lovely with the music paper backing. But there are more places to go with this than just your paper and your fabric. The odds are if you are holding those things, you're probably holding some other things too. So allow me to suggest if you've got some washi tapes that you're holding, that you create a nice belly band, just putting a little bit of the washi tape, maybe three I've put here, maybe you've got five you can fit in, whatever you want. They don't have to be the same theme. I've got the ocean, I've got a butterfly, I've got a flower here. They don't have to be the same theme at all. I have then just, again, done some free flow stitching over it, but that was unnecessary. It was a very cute belly band as it was. Exactly the same technique you saw in the beginning. Get a straight piece of cardboard, cover it with book page, put my washi tape down, and I've got a lovely belly band that not only is functional, but preserves some of the gorgeous washi tape I have in my collection for when I've used it all up. There's no guarantee I'll be able to get the same one again. 
This is fabric again, but it's a slightly different twist on it. I'm trying to try and bring it quite up close to the camera and hopefully you can see that there's Big Ben in the picture here. So this is actually a picture fabric. It's painting a scene of London. And I only had this strip and I really, really didn't want to cut it up. So I just decided that instead of, you know, having three pieces of fabric or two pieces of fabric, I'll just preserve this one long strip on a tag. It's a functional tag, but it's also preserving a lovely snippet of fabric that, yes, I could have cut it up. Uh, I could have collaged with it. I could have used it as a topper for a tag. I didn't want to do that. It was too beautiful. So I preserved it in one long sample strip. Still on fabric, you might have, look how gorgeous this is. This was just snippets that I got in a thrift store. It was too beautiful to cut up again. Again, I could have cut around this, fussy cut around it, collage with it. I could have done lots of different things with this fabric, but it was too nice. Okay, I didn't want to. So I decided to create a sample card with all the little pieces of the cats on one sample card that gave me a sense of what the bigger piece of fabric would have looked like originally. And that will stay preserved. Now, this is obviously not a tag. It's a journaling card. Even with the stitching on the back, I can journal in these little spaces created by the stitching and around the edges. I love it when that happens. Um, this is a journaling card and it's a very straightforward one. It's, you know, cardboard, music paper, and then just putting the fabric on top, a bit of ink around, and that is it. I feel like when it comes to things like this, they're just too beautiful for me to cut up in the normal way that I would. And I only had fragments of them. So I wanted to preserve those fragments. And lastly, I've got two more ideas. What about fussy cuts? Have you ever spent ages cutting out an image and just then never found the right project for it? And it's infuriating because you've actually sat and really meticulously cut out that image and you're like, I'm sure I'll use that image, but for whatever reason, it doesn't fit on the piece of paper whenever you put one on. It doesn't look right with the other colours in your collage. Whatever it is, for some reason, if you find fussy cuts that have been sat there for years, just find one or two that you like together. Put them on a tag, a book page tag or any kind of tag that you want. Um, you can stitch over them or you can just ink around, make it out and preserve those beautiful pieces that you took the time to cut out. So fussy cut, that's another thing that you can preserve. This one, you know how much I love my ink stamps. This is just a swatch of some of my British themed ink stamps that I got in a very cheap craft store in the UK called The Works. It is just an old piece of cardboard. I haven't even put book page on this. And I've just inked around the edge, put a bit of um, seam binding at the top and chosen three stamps to sample. Now, you might think, well, Helen, you know, I might run out of washi tape, so yes, I want to sample that. Bits of fabric, I might run out of that, so I want to sample that. But why would I need to sample ink stamps in my journal? I mean, it looks pretty, don't get me wrong, but what's the functional point of that? How is that going to stop me hoarding? These are excellent swatches, i.e. reminders, of the ink stamps that you own when you're doing a project. If you're anything like me and you're an ink stamp person, you have quite a few ink stamps and it's quite difficult sometimes to remember all the ink stamps that you have. So having little swatches like this reminds you, oh, you know, I haven't used that little teapot ink stamp in a really long time. And I certainly don't need to accidentally go out and buy a second ink stamp with a teapot on it because I already have one. So these can be really useful for not only making your journal look beautiful, reminding yourself what stamps you have, but also preventing you from multiple purchases of the same stamp. It's very easy to do, just as it's very easy to buy similar craft paper or similar washi tape, etc., etc. So by creating these sample cards, you're not only preventing it yourself from hoarding uh, because you've got some of the pieces preserved and you'll always have that even if you use up the rest of the fabric or even if you use up the rest of the paper. You're also helping yourself to avoid repeat purchases and essentially making it more likely 
that you will use what is in your stash, especially those fussy cuts that you have spent precious time cutting out. I hope this has been inspiring. Please put in the comments down below what you would put on your sample cards. What have you got in your stash that you've been hoarding? And does this open up some possibilities for you in terms of making sure you've got a little sample of it and therefore you can use the rest of it without any fear of losing it forever? I'd love to hear about it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been inspiring. I'm going to put all these new pieces in my junk journal and be very happy at how I'm able to hoard and use at the same time. <laughs> I'll see you next time.